Here once again in the Jaguar section of my garage. Uh, this is an XK120 1954. That is a totally stock car. If you've been to the website, you've seen the video on that. This is my 1954 XK120 Roadster. Um, not quite stock, uh, quite a few upgrades, but looks stock. Uh, feel stock is up for uh, a little more power and the, uh, the five-speed transmission. And this is one you haven't seen before. This is the XKE. Uh, looks stock, but heavily, heavily modified. In fact, the first thing you might notice if you've got a real Jag aficionado eye is how small it is. Look how small it is in relationship to the 120. It's not an illusion, it is smaller. They never built a short wheelbase V12 Roadster. Uh, this car has had about uh, quite a few inches taken out of it. Well, let's bring in the man who actually uh, did this car. I've owned this car well over 15 years. And uh, the man who did the restoration on my 1954 uh, XK120, Jason Lynn from XK Unlimited, did the work on this one. Jason, how are you? Not Hi, Jake, good. This was your personal car <laughs> yes. until I forced you to sell it to me because I was so in love with it. Well, I was in the middle of a house remodel. This oh, is the new West Wing. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, I would rather have this than a new bathroom any day. But then again. Uh, you don't have four daughters. <laughs> exactly, exactly. T t uh, talk us through the car. Well, as a longtime Jaguar enthusiast, Jaguar made the six-cylinder version, which was a shorter wheelbase and more most people consider it better proportions, better handling. I agree. The V12s have that sexy V12 engine, but they're built on a long wheelbase. It's a little more ungainly. It doesn't handle as nice. Right. So I decided to combine the best of two. Right. Now, you can't fit a V12 motor into a six-cylinder chassis. Right. So I took this car, which was originally a 2 plus 2 hardtop. I cut the top off. I cut the car in half. I shortened the chassis 9 inches, and then I found a Series 1 rear tub, grafted it on, enclosed the headlights with Series 1 headlight covers, so externally it looks somewhat like a Series 1, and it's a Series 1 wheelbase. Handles a lot nicer, proportions are a lot better, and then um, you still have all the sexy V12 running gear. Right. It's really funny when uh, Jag guys come to the garage, they look at it, and they can't quite get a handle on it. Show them from the back. To me, I always like the Series 1 rear end anyway. The back half is completely stock Series 1. Bumpers, lights, all the sheet metal. The only thing we changed, which is very subtle, is the V12s had these rear fenders that were flared. So we flared the fenders and we shortened these bumpers three inches because originally they came to here, they wouldn't clear the, the flare anymore. So little bits of trim work like that. On the front, we did similar work. On the Series 3s, originally these were open headlights to meet the federal standards. Right. And we reworked all the sheet metal around here and enclosed the headlights to make it look like a Series 1. Now the hardest part of the whole conversion was the doors in the top. First of all, the door jams are a completely different shape in here, so we had to all hand make this to make the doors fit. After months and months of this, I thought, okay, we're on the home stretch. I put the convertible top up, folded it up, and found out that the Series 1 top is two inches narrower than the Series 3 windshield. <laughs> right. So we had to go back and cut the top in half and extend each section a half inch at a time so it slowly spread to meet the Series 1 or the Series 3 windshield. We upgraded it with a five-speed, uh, high-performance suspension, Willwood brakes. We built a special motor for this. It's got our own custom big bore kit in it. Right. Now, originally it's a what, a 5.2 liter? 5.3 was stock. 5.3 was stock. Weber carbs, high lift cams. Let's open the hood, Sean. Took it out to 5.7 liter. Um, and there's nothing sexy in those big Weber carburetors, especially on a V12. Yes. Uh, you know, you can spend all kinds of money on Ferraris and get a V12 with Webers, or for about a, a tenth of the price, you can do the same thing with one of these motors. Dual fans, it runs cool enough, runs fine, handles well. Uh, it's a good looking car. What else have we done to it here under the hood? Custom uh, hand built stainless steel headers right. with a big bore exhaust system on it, uh, heavy duty sway bars, um, Willwood brakes, and then we put Dunlop wheels, which were a very common English racing wheel from right. the 60s. It feels to me, what, about 400 horse? Pretty close to it. I think yeah. when we built it, we dynoed it at 375, 380. Well, it's been a, a, just a wonderful car for the last 15 years. It's great. Glad you enjoy it. It still oh, yeah. looks great. Oh, yeah. No, it still looks great. It runs great. In fact, uh, let's see how it runs right now.
thing about Italian and uh, English sports cars, you don't want to give them too much gas until your water temperature is off the stop. These are notoriously cold-blooded. They're meant to run when everything is at optimum operating temperature, and that's when they run best. So anytime you you uh, floor it or give it too you know give it too much throttle when uh, when everything isn't quite up to temperature, you run the risk of doing some damage. I've been running this motor now 15, 16 years, no problems at all. Okay, except for kicking. When I was a kid, I never dreamed I'd actually own one of these, especially one with as much power as this. You know, back when dinosaurs ruled the earth, there were Cobras, Corvettes, and XKEs. And those were the big three. In fact, uh, they even did songs about them. Spring Little Cobra, there was Dead Man's Curve, you know, it was part of rock and roll. Oh, it's not really a part of rock and roll anymore the way they used to be. And I gotta admit, I kind of miss that. I mean, this actually has more power than the Rock Corvette back in the day. And it handles nice and it stops well. And you see your dashboard, it's pretty traditional. Speedometer, tachometer. Battery condition, volts, oil pressure, clock, water temperature, fuel gauge. And of course, the later Jags had these dopey rocker switches. I always prefer the toggle switches, but for safety reasons, you had to switch to those. Maybe one day I'll put a panel in there and put toggle switches back on if I ever get around to it. And of course, you gotta have a tape deck. That kind of replaced the eight track that was already in there. And as we mentioned earlier, this one has the five speed. That's your flyaway handbrake. They call it that because it clicks up and then you press the button and let it drop. You know, these Jaguar V12s really do benefit from what they call the Italian tune-up. You know, they get carboned up a little bit and you're supposed to kind of put it in second gear or get it warm, put it in second, nail it, take it all the way up to 60, back off in second gear. That blows the carbon out. Do that a couple of times and Wow, it's like you're on race gas. It sounds like an old wives' tale, but it actually does work. And even if it didn't work, it's still fun. You know, to me, it's still a pretty good looking car. Maybe I'm just a little too old school, or maybe I'm just a little too old. But to me, the best looking sports cars were designed in the 50s and the 60s. Just the right amount of aerodynamics, but with, uh, you know, a little bit of the artist's eye thrown in as well. Uh, so much emphasis is put on aerodynamics now that cars don't look as attractive as they used to. They might be more efficient, but the emotional part isn't there. Oh look, I think we're warmed up. I think it's a great engine, these 312 Jag motors. You can get them relatively cheaply, and you know, you put some Weber carburetors on them, you let them breathe a little bit. There's a lot of power there. You know, these are modifications you can make to just about any Jag. These Wilwood disc brakes are far superior to the originals, and they're a lot cheaper, and uh, they stop a lot better. You know, you can always go back to stock at any time nice as the modern sports cars are, they're still not as exciting to drive as some of the early stuff. Now the early stuff doesn't handle as well or stop as well, it's not even as fast, but there's just some visceral thrill you get, you know, smelling those whiffs of oil that are hitting the uh, exhaust headers, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Uh, the mid-60s I think was the high point. I think were some of the most beautiful sports cars of the day. It was pretty much a golden era, and it's fun being able to relive it in these uh, web shoots. Give me a good excuse to go out and uh, exercise the car. 